I declare the meeting open. Would everyone please stand for the opening prayer? Om Asatoma Sadakamaya, Tamsoma, Jyotirikamaya, Mrityurama, Amrakam Gamaya, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Om Peace, Peace, Peace. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Salamu alaikum, peace. Allah, 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 Salamu alaikum. Thank you, everyone. I have two mayoral minutes. Councillors, it's with great sadness that I announce the death of the late Peter Theodore Joseph Herlinger, former councillor and mayor of Holroyd City Council. Will we all stand now for a minute's silence? Thank you, everybody. Now I have a second mayoral minute. Following the severe storms in March 2022, disaster assistance would now be available in 12 additional local government areas, including the Cumberland local government area. No, I was just going to point out that um, Cumberland was left out. I think it was only after uh, Councillor Christo got on radio um, and questioned why. I think it was a matter of hours later that Cumberland was added on. We go now to items by exception, councillors. I wish to move that as a matter of urgency, the Director of Infrastructure report to the next council meeting upon the extent of inundation experienced across the city during the recent inclement weather events, the condition of the city's road network generally, and areas of this network which require immediate remedial actions, the cost involved to council in addressing immediate problems outside the normal expenditure of maintenance works, the necessary increase in costs of construction works on, on projects, if required, which are already approved, the impact of such cost increases, if any, upon Council's current financial position, and the impact, of the, in, in, in the impact upon the 2022-23 works program. That Council investigate what financial assistance can be sought from the State and Federal Government to supplement Council's repair and maintenance costs and take immediate action to implement such opportunities. Further, that a, policy and op that a policy from an operational perspective, any future events impacting upon Council's performance with the potential impact upon communities be reported as a matter of urgency to the Chamber. There's more to Council than just committees. It's very much about communities. We are talking, we don't just have potholes, we have craters and other um, damage to our local government area. We won't have enough money to pay for this. We don't have enough money in the bank. And given that we have a major workshop this weekend to discuss Council's financial budget for the next year, we have some councillors who want to play politics and not support an issue like this because it came from Councillor Gara. Climate change and, and um, increasing carbon in the atmosphere. Councillor Sarkis, what's your matter? Madam Mayor, my, my matter of urgency uh, relates to soaring petrol prices. I think it's worthwhile that this council lead the way right to the federal government, right to the ACCC, find some form of relief for the Australian people uh, with petrol prices. So uh, I, support, I support the motion because um, uh, people around our area, they've, they've got to drive long distances to work. You know, they, they don't, they don't li a lot of them don't live close to work. And now, councillors, we'll go through items on the agenda. 2027 legal report, 28 annual disclosure of interest return. 29 update on the approved Merrill Community Fund applications. 30 the sponsorship of the Rotary Club of Holroyd. 31 the investment report. 32 the employment zones reform. 33 the infrastructure contributions reform. The draft planning agreement. 34 the Guildford one. That's got to go to vote. Uh, 35 water risk improvement committee minutes. 36 the tender evaluation report for the Auburn Depot demolition. Close council, madam. And finally, the late report, the Alga motions for submission. Number 32 the employment zones reform. Councillor Hamid. Speaking for the motion, and I wanted to announce to our residents tonight that this uh, will now mean that places of public worship, and I do want to focus on places of public worship, places of public worship now will be permitted once again with the consent, uh, with consent, uh, where previously prohibited uh, in B1, B2, B4, B5 and B6 zones. Can I, can I have confirmed that the, these changes are changes regulated by the Department of Planning or the State Government? These changes are required by the state government. Madam Mayor, they are changes, by, changes made by the state government. Um, look, I, I stand thoroughly behind every decision that was made by the former council in relation to places of worship. Uh, you know, I, I really believe that neighbourhoods, 
are the greatest asset to communities and you need to treat residential neighbourhoods very, very carefully. I don't walk away from what, I, what, what decisions we made in the past because they were in the public interest. I'm not satisfied that this change by the state government is in the public interest. 33 infrastructure contributions reform. The proposed reform would result in potential deferral and reduction of these payments or contribution. We are likely to lose an average of 2.85 million in developer contribution every year. It also breaks the connection between the development and the place. The only way the council will be able to pay for anything will be to raise the rates, something our community definitely cannot afford. This is simply a, a cash grab by the state government. I wouldn't be so hard on developers. At least developers, when they contribute the money, are happy to see the work done within an area, within a community. But now they contribute the money only to have the government grab it. This issue, I think, is not a developer issue. It's a New South Wales government issue in that uh, yeah. the, de the developers will continue to pay their contributions. The issue is that the local government council potentially may lose control over the, contribu over the access to those contributions. We'll move now on to number 34, the 399 Guildford Road. Again, it's unanimous. Thank you. Yeah. Item 37, the ALGA motions. People are also looking for opportunities to take action on climate change. Councillor Faruqi. Homelessness in Australia is gendered because women face um, more homelessness than men. And this is the reason I support the motion of increasing the funding to put a roof over the head of women and children escaping domestic and family violence. Councillor Coleman. Our youth long-term unemployment youth support programs, local communities, local councils and local employment, local councils, local business, local youth. Storage electricity, bigger batteries. In the interest of accuracy, I agree with the sentiments expressed on, on homelessness, undoubtedly. But if we're going to be accurate, and this is a, a national conference we're going to, right? The last instance, 58% of men made up the homeless, not, not women. Well, there might be a growing number of women that are homeless, the, the uh, figure at the last census, is what we can go by, um, way, uh, way out, out weighs the, the uh, number of women, 58% to 42. That was a really good policy discussion, so I'm looking forward to the ALGA conference. I think there's nine of us going, so we'll be, we'll be well armed with some good policy. Councillors, in accordance with Section 10A 2D1 of the Local Government Act, I recommend Council enter into closed session to discuss item number CO3 2225, Tender Evaluation Report, Auburn Depot Demolition and Construction, as the information within the report is commercial information of a confidential nature that would, if disclosed, prejudice the commercial position of the person who supplied it. Thanks. The submission significantly exceeded the budget. We invite fresh tenders. There being no further business, I'm happy to declare the meeting closed at 8.33pm.